So let us talk about uh, service oriented architecture today. We call it SOA. Now this service oriented architecture is an architectural pattern in computer software design in which application components provide service to other components via a communication protocol typically over a network. So the principle of service orientation are independent of any vendor, product or technology. Now this line is very important. The principle of this service orientation is exactly saying that it has to be independent of any vendor, any product or any technology. So a service is a self-contained unit of functionality such as retrieving an online bank statement as a service is a discreetly invocable operation. So services can be combined to provide the functionality of a large software application. This SOA makes it easier for software components on computers connected over a network to cooperate. So every computer can run on any number of services and each service is built in a way that ensures that the service can exchange information with any other service with any other service okay in the network without human interaction and without the need to change the underlying program itself so SOA implementations it rely on actually mesh of software services which we are going to see diagrammatically soon and services comprises unassociated loosely coupled units of functionality that have no calls to each other embedded in them and each service implements one action such as filling out an online application for an account or viewing an online bank account or placing an online bank account or uh, airline ticket order. All these things can be done through this service oriented architecture using the services. So what is the principle? The following, uh, you know, these are the uh, following uh, guiding principles which are defining the ground rules of the development, maintenance and usage of the SOA. So we have reuse, granularity, modularity, compensability, componentization and interoperability. Also the standards compliance, we are going to see uh, the standard compliance and both common and industry specific uh, these standards are included and services identification and categorization and provisioning and delivery and monitoring and tracking. So what are the attributes of uh, uh, SOA if you are asked that tell us the attribute of SOA so in addition one might take the following factors with account when defining a SOA implementation these are the attributes it efficient use of system resources service maturity and performance and EAI that is enterprise uh, application integration which is defined as the use of software and computer systems architecture principle to integrate a set of enterprise computer applications that we are going to see. There are various things which I am saying that we are going to see because we will see it diagrammatically. Now let us come down to SOA and web service protocol because service oriented architecture we are providing services on internet on web. So we need to have SOA and web service protocol idea also. So let's start with service encapsulation. Many web services are consolidated for use under the SOA. So often such services were not planned to under OSA, they just, you know, they were developed and they found their place in SOA. And service loose coupling, when service maintain a relationship that minimizes dependency on and only requires that they maintain awareness of each other. So dependency which was there needs to be, uh, you know, removed. It needs to be minimized. Then comes the service contract that services adhere to a Communication agreement as defined collectively by one or more service uh, description documents. So there has to be a document on that document decides that service contract decides how the communication is going to be. Then service abstraction beyond description in the service contract services hide logic from the outside world. So why the logic needs to be known to everyone? Let it be uh, hidden and let the work go on. So let us continue this uh, also, this SOA and web service protocol because it's uh, quite a big topic. So implementers commonly uh, build this SOAs using web service standards, for example, SOAP. We are going to see this also. Uh, that have gained broad industry acceptance and these standards are also referred to as web service specifications. So also provide greater interoperability and some protection from locking to proprietary vendor software. So one can however implement this SOA using any service based technology such as Genie, Korba or REST.
Then SOA and web services, service oriented architecture is what? Derived from the client service architecture style, client and service servers are there. Clients means the service consumers or requester and the servers means service providers. These are connected by a bus, means you know, internet or you know network. So service uh, this the services defined using uh, ser certain formal interfaces that we just discussed a service contract and service bus supports point-to-point -point and messaging styles of communication so support for system qualities for example security and transaction management because you're talking about network you're uh, trying to give the service or making a plan so that service can be given on a network or a web so you need to have security and transaction management uh, very much understood and very much you know completely thoughtful so web services service uh, provided in SOA deployed over the web these are the web services like those people who are, might be using some uh, Google's uh, Google's and open street maps they might be aware of uh, web map service and web coverage service all those things are using web services only so here we start whatever we have decided or whatever we have learned till now is what I have laid a uh, you can you, know, you can say a groundwork it was just a foundation from here we actually start the web services or your service oriented architecture this is soap this is wsdl and these this is uredi these three are the most important part of your soa or service oriented architecture what is soap soap means simple object access protocol this is a message exchanging uh, standard that supports service communication what is WSDL web service definition language? This standard allows the service interface and its binding to be defined. The new DDI, universal description, discovery and integration. So what is this? This defines the components of a service specification that may be used to discover the existence of a service. So SOAP, WSDL, UDDI, because these are important, we'll see them one by one. Well, before that, we uh, I just wanted to highlight that what exactly we are talking about today because we have learned all those theory but needs to see that where exactly things lie this is the service requester this is the uh, service registry and this is the service provider so this is the requester this is the provider and this is where the things lie this is information lie so here we have soap soap to find to publish to bind but all these are communication lines. All these are communication lines. So these communication is possible through SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol. Now WSDL, where does it lie? It lies here. WSDL or Service Providing, Service Description, Service Interface and these uh, services itself. Then UDDI, where does this UDDI lies? UDDI, this is Universal Discovery Description. Here it lies UDDI, right? For this, you need to have UDDI. So specifically, we are talking about UDDI, SOAP, and WSDL. All these three combined with many other technologies, they become or they make uh, SOA possible. So let me tell you about these three individually because they are very important. SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol. So. So it is a protocol specification for exchanging structured information in the implementation of web services in a computer network. So it uses XML information set for its message format and relies on other application layer protocols. Most notably HTTP hypertext transport protocol. So it relies on HTTP. Also simple mail transfer protocol SMTP for message negotiation and transmission. So so. This is how our communication or uh, you know exchanging of information will take place over HTTP or SMTP. Then WSDL, the second part, uh, this is web services definition language. So WSDL, again, it is uh, XML based interface definition language that is used for describing the functionality offered by a web service. This acronym is also used for any specific WSDL description of a web service, also referred as a WSDL file. So which provides a machine readable description of how the service can be called, what parameter it accepts, what data structure it returns. So let me highlight those lines because these things which I'm highlighting is the most important that this is a machine readable aspect for how the service can be called, what parameter it accepts and what data structure it returns. 
coming to the third part that is the UDDI universal description discovery and integration this UDDI is a platform independent extensible markup language protocol in which includes XML based registry by which business worldwide can list themselves can list themselves every business can list themselves on the internet and a mechanism to register and locate web service application so something is there there has to be a store where it is lying how do I know where is the service how do people know that where to put the service so to know the service to put the service you have UDDI that is universal description uh, discovery and integration the UDDI is an open industry initiative sponsored by organization of the advancement of structured information uh, standard that is OSS for enabling these businesses to publish service listing, publish service listing again and discover each other and again dis discover each other. These are two things which needs to be remembered as far as UDDI is concerned and to define how the services or software applications interact over the internet. So these are the SOAP messages. These are SOAP messages. These are based on message exchanges. The SOAP is actually based on these message exchanges and messages are seen as an envelope uh, where the application encloses the data to be sent and the message has two parts. One is the header part, one is the body part. And SOAP does not say that what to do with the header and the body. It only states that the header is optional and the body is mandatory. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to make, it's up to you, but header uh, is actually optional but you need to have a body for sure and use of header body however it's implicit the body is for application level data the body is again I mean, emphasizing it's for application level data and the header is for infrastructure level data that is why it is optional so let me show you the weather uh, where this header and body lies and how actually your soap look likes just by talking, we are not going to get the idea. You need to know what exactly SOAP SOAP contains. This is the SOAP actual message. This is the SOAP header and this is the SOAP body. This you need to have. Now this is uh, again the formation I've just uh, tried to explain more you know, in detail you can say the soap and HTTP because soap needs HTTP soap cannot by itself just exchange messages it needs to use HTTP or SMTP so we have this service requester this is service provider these are soap envelope you can say soap messages these are soap messages this is posting this is acknowledging so you have in service requester this HTTP again in service provider you have HTTP so these are the emerging uh, web services platform emerging which has uh, I must say it has already merged. So these things start from because we have learned about these three UDDI, WSD and SOAP. So this is for discovery and description. This is for description. This is for discovery. These are for transport. XML encodings also for transport. And again for transport you have HTTP, BEEP, IOP, JMS, SMTP because SOAP will is going to work on these only and for the quality of service you need reliable messaging security transaction coordination contacts and business collaboration languages and business process languages whichever you prefer so how to build an soa in eight step so business need these this is very theoretical you know you just uh, just uh, relax and just listen because i'm not going to tell uh, any greater science in this just relax so uh, building an soa in eight step Business needs come first, not services. What problem are we trying to solve? Then the second is what aspect can be implemented as services, old services, new services, or legacy wrappers. Then third step is track services with registries and repositories. Then fourth, govern the services. We need to encourage desired behavior at many levels across enterprises and at different stages. So we need to monitor behavior, enforce policies, and assess user satisfaction. Then fifth, secure the service. If you are governing the service, it's your duty to secure the service. Establish standard, we need privacy, identification, authentication, and authorization. So this may need to be federated security, right? Then the sixth part, manage the service. Are messages arriving on time? Is everything operating properly? Then virtualization through mediation. So are we free to move and change services? Do we need any you know exter uh, external uh, bus or architecture type that acts as a central hub for message routing and transformation? So design, finally, design for interoperability through the adoption of standards. So what are the benefits of this SOA? 
Some enterprise architects believe that SOA can help businesses respond more quickly and cost effectively to changing market conditions. This is what is important and this is what we are sort uh, asking from SOA. So this style of architecture promotes reuse at the mic uh, this macro that is a service level rather than micro that is class level which was earlier being done and now it has been changed to service and it can also simplify interconnection to and usage of existing IT legacy assets. Thank you so much. I tried to give you a hint about what is SOA. Hope you understood. Thank you so much.